Okay, the number one ingredient on the return to serve is to be excited and relaxed at the same time. Many times you'll see players and they're bouncing up and down and they're moving. Are they nervous? Sure they're nervous, but it's that nervous energy that's going to help them get to the ball quickly. But at the same time, if you're too nervous, you're going to get the lead feet, the cement shoes, and you're going to tighten up and you're not going to be able to move. So you need to be relaxed as well. When you have a balance, when you have that balance of being excited and relaxed at the same time, you're going to be able to move to the ball quickly and you'll be energized. Here the returner is relaxed and excited at the same time, equal parts of both. This will enable the returner to get to the ball quickly. Number two key ingredient on the returner serve, focus on the ball. Start watching it in the can. Now honestly, start watching it as it is in your opponent's hand. As he begins his toss, watch the ball. And then keep your eyes on the ball and the toss. Follow it right to the contact point and then follow it right up to your contact area. You want your eyes and head still when you're making contact with the ball. There's a strong tendency to lift the head on the return of serve because things are happening fast. You're not sure what your opponent's doing. Is he rushing the net or whatever? And you tend to look up when your head moves. Remember in science class when they said for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Well, you're in the middle of your swing. Here comes the ball. You're just about to hit it, and your head looks up like this. That little movement of your head causes this to move. When the racket moves, that's why you hit it on the frame. You get the miss hits. So concentrate on the ball. That's key on the return of serve. Okay, remember, focus on the ball right up to the contact area. I say contact area because many times players may say, well, I'm going to try and watch the ball hit the strings but you, you really can't see the ball hit the strings. It's a millisecond happening. It's happening too fast. Actually, the last time your eyes will see the ball, when the ball is about four feet away from the contact point. So the net right now would represent the last time I see the ball. Many times you'll look in a tennis magazine and you'll see the player like this with the ball on the strings and their eyes are focused right out there about where the net is because that's the last time they saw it. You won't see them like this. If you try and do this, it's too quick of an eye movement to move your head like that. And actually, that movement of the head can cause miss hits. So don't try and watch it too close. Just follow it up nicely to about four feet away from the contact point. That's the last time you'll see it right there. And then remember, keep your head still as you finish the stroke. Start watching the ball in your opponent's hand. Watch as he makes contact and follow the ball right into your contact area. Okay, number three ingre key ingredient on the return of serve, forward movement. If you're thinking defensively on the return, it's going to really hinder your ability to return effectively. You've got to have forward movement. Thinking, think of going out diagonally forward, going out to meet the ball. Remember, this is not the post office. There's no deliveries here. The ball's not going to come to you. You have to go out to meet the ball. Okay, a good tactic you can use, is, let's say you're up against a big server and you're standing back. Now, as the server starts his toss, start to walk in, start to move forward. And then just as he hits the ball, do your split step and then move quickly forward on the diagonal to the ball. Forward movement is definitely a key. You have to have that to have a good return. Here's a good tactic to get you moving in the right direction. Watch the returner walk forward on the toss, split step at contact, and then continue to move forward.